Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Stan Route. Tonight's episode of All Facts, No Cap. We got my man, Aaron Williams, former Buffalo Bill safety. AJ, man, how you been? What's going on? I'm good, man. Just, you know, I'm glad the winter storm is over with, so I'm chilling. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just hop right into it. I know uh, just like just like myself, I know a player that you played against, Vincent Jackson, obviously with him passing uh, recently, uh, back in the month of February. Now there's reports coming out that possibly he was suffering from CTE, brain disease, things like that. And with so much that has transpired throughout the NFL with technology, people now starting to see exactly the traumas that come with playing the game after one is done hanging up their cleats. A lot of people are now the mindset that they would tell their kids or they're telling their youth, or should I say our youth, that they would not advise them to play football. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, man, you know, I've had this question go through my mind plenty of times, especially with my story of how how I started my career and how my career ended. Um, I've always went back and forth and, and always wondered, would I ever tell my son, you know, I don't want you playing this uh, football. But then again, man, that's taking away that's taking away someone's joy. You know what I'm saying? That's taking away something that makes them happy, something that gets them through, by, through, through life itself, because, you know, life is up and down. So, I mean, what I advise, whatever, tell a kid to not play football. No, I would never tell a kid to not play. But at the same time, I will um, inform him of what comes with playing this uh, barbaric sport. And, you know, if he's willing to take those risks, then, you know, that's on him. That's his life. But I, I don't think I would ever tell someone, you know, you can't play football because, you know, you might get injured. You might get injured driving a car. So, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, a little bit more risk as far as injury wise. But if that's something that brings you joy, yeah, by all means, go ahead and do it. Yeah, I'm pretty much of the same of the same uh, stance that I understand that obviously it's an aggressive sport. It's a dangerous sport. And I think that for most of us, we all are pretty aware of what we're signing up for when we decide to go ahead and put the pads and put the helmet on, especially entering the NFL. And I think that with all that being said, that already is it in a nutshell. But also, I think for me, playing football, whether it's high school, college, pro, whatever, you learn so many things that you can take off the field. Like it teaches you about discipline, teaches you about being a man, teaches you how to work well with others. It teaches you how to take your differences that you may have with somebody else, throw that out the window and go, go ahead and focus just more on the greater good simply because we all have one common goal in mind and that's to win. So I don't know if I would ever advise a kid not to play just because of all of the benefits that may come, not only from the financial gain, we all know that, but just from learning how to be a man and learning certain things that you otherwise may not have learned until much later in life that you can actually go ahead and use going forward. Right. I, I, I fully agree. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy to me how people would ever think, you know, there's a lot of things in this world that are, that are dangerous, but there's one thing to tell someone you can't do a particular thing, um, especially a, a sport, like you said, that develops um, team teamwork, uh, the chemistry you build, uh, teaches you who you are as a person, you know, what, what you put yourself through a lot of things that you never thought you put yourself through. So I, I agree with you on that. Going back to <clears throat> your last games, obviously we all remember. I remember the uh, the article that you uh, wrote in the Players Tribune. Take me back to that play <clears throat> against the Miami Dolphins, the crackback block, Jarvis Landry. In that moment, what's going through your mind now that you have a few more years removed from it to actually go ahead and reflect on that? Man, uh, I mean, going back through it, it was a it was a hurry up play. They were we were in their red zone. Um, I want to say it was like on the thirteen yard line or something like that. And it was a it was a it was a stretch run, a stretch play. And I remember I'm I'm like I know I, I kind of understand the run the run games coming through, and I kind of read it fast. And as I'm going down to go, you know, hit one of the gaps, I don't know what it was, but something told me to just look to your right. Because I always don't, 
when I'm thinking like receiver might, you know, take the corner out on a on a on a go route on a streak or something. I'm not thinking he's gonna crack back block me on that particular play. But for whatever reason, I look back last minute and Jarvis Landry's helmet just right on my chin and and just takes me out. And that was actually the second neck injury I had in my career. I had, the year before, I had the same injury against New England. So yeah. mm-hmm. when that happened, I was like, man, just my luck. Like, I kind of already knew that that was it for me because I another serious injury like that, um, you got to think as a general manager and, and a person that owns a team, like, you look at your history and you're like, okay, would I invest in this player to lead me on d- down down the road? And I didn't take that mindset until like, man, I'm four years out of the league now or three years, three or four years. I'm just now understanding, you know, why they made the decision to get rid of me and why they did this and why they did that. And it, it sucks when it initially, uh, when it happened to me, just because it's fresh and you're just frustrated and you really just want to be out there and be for your team. But um, thinking back on it, you know, it sucked that it happened to me, but that is the game of football. You yeah. know, looking back and understanding, like, I watched people get blindsided growing up watching this game, and I loved it. Like, those those were the hits that made me want to play the game more. Like, that's just something I really enjoy. So, for it to happen to me, it sucked. But when you look at the hindsight of just, like, how everything happened, could have been avoided? Absolutely. Without a doubt, he could have blocked me in a different manner, a different way, a different technique. But sometimes in, in the game of football, accidents and hits like that just happen. It's, it's the nature of the game. And to look back at it, um, you know, that's just the way it happens. Some It happens to other people. It just happened to be my time, apparently. So looking back, that's just what I, I got from out of it is don't take it personal. You literally got to take NFL as a business. Like it literally is a business. Like it's not, it's not a hobby no more. It's not like a, you know, Oh, we care for you. Like we, like we care for you as a person. We want you on team, but it's no, it's like, we're trying to win a champion, a championship, you know, and these are steps. And right now it's just not, you're not fitting our game plan of getting there. So I understood that later down, down the road. Yeah, so after that hit, then obviously things transpire. And like you just alluded to, Buffalo decides to go ahead and let you go. Thinking back on it, knowing how, just like I do, they say most of the time in this league, you'll either leave this game two years too early or two years too late. Mm. Looking back on it, if you were talking to your younger self, talking to the youth, something like that, is it something that you would have done again if you could go ahead and back and repeat everything all over? Oh, absolutely. Um, I honestly think I left the league too soon, in my personal opinion. I, I had I had just figured out what it meant to be a professional. And it, I don't mean that like in my year six era. It, I, at year three, I started understanding how to last long in this league. And I had mentors. I had Ed Reed as a coach who was like the greatest mm-hmm. safety who ever play the game as my coach. And we would spend time outside of locker room. Just he, man, he would talk to me about just like, what are you going to, he kept talking to me about what are you going to do after, after the league, after football, after this. And I never really understood it until I got outside the league of what he really meant. So what I, I wouldn't change anything. I would, I, anything I would, I did back then the the style of play I would change a little bit because to me I was trying to prove something to people to be the big tough guy to go out there and hit guys as hard as I can and have that respect for my peers not knowing that you know there are there are ways to 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 last long in this league there's just certain techniques and certain way of playing the game to to last long and I had just started understanding that towards the towards that end of my career and and it just didn't it's unfold. I just, I went through a lot during that years. Not many people last six years in the league. So I'm very grateful, very, you know, very blessed to, to last long in the, in the league as long as I did. Absolutely, man. I feel like us Texas boys are built a little bit differently. I know uh, guys from California, Georgia, Florida, they may go ahead and have their belief as well. But I personally believe guys from Texas, just they're always going to be built different. And I believe that shows within their longevity of being able to play in this league. 
I like what you just touched on about how learning how to be a professional. And I remember you also said that in your article in the other players tribune, what can you say attributed to that? You all of a sudden learning, okay, you know what? I got to learn to study a little bit better. I got to take care of my body better. I got to learn to be more of a professional and how I approach the game. Man, my performance, man. Looking back, my first two years, man, honestly, I was a young kid that got caught up in a lifestyle that I just was reaching for. Like, <laughs> I it. It when I got, you know what I mean? When you get to the league, you're like, dang, I finally made it. You know, I get, I got, I got all sorts of money. I got, you know, women coming at me. I parties like a lot and I, and I have the, the game that I love. Like there's nothing that can go wrong. Man, my performance on that field, man, showed that I didn't truly take care of my craft or, or develop or increase my craft in the game of football. Uh, I was caught up in, outside stuff man you know what it, what it comes oh, yeah, to it. with you know what I mean and it took me to where I I realized when I when they changed my position that was kind of a that was kind of a, a wake-up call for me to be like I could have got fired they could have cut me right there but they decided they saw something in me that they were willing to to bet on and I'm thankful for the opportunity to get to have my position changed because that I almost was out of the league after year two. So for for that, it's just like when you're and then when you're around other veterans, and I mean veterans, I mean guys like nine, year nine, 10, 11, you start hanging around with them and then you realize they don't do the same things you do. And they're like, man, they got way more money. They're more established. They have things going for themselves. And you just sit back and you look back and you're like, okay. If I really want to last long, what I've been doing is not working. So let me get with the guys that have been here for X amount of years and pick up what, you know, whatever the tendencies and whatever they do and just kind of form it into my own and, and, and kind of carry it through that out my career. I like that. So now here we go. <clears throat> you finally played your last down of football in the NFL. You are now officially retired, quote unquote. First thing that's going through your mind, kind of like what Ed Reed alluded to, what are you going to do after football? What's the first thing that's going through your mind once you realize, like, okay, you know what, that chapter's over with. Now I got to go ahead and start to move on to something else. Man, that that chapter literally hit me maybe this this past year, to be honest with you, to where I can really say that chapter of my life is over with. Um, it. Man, when I first when I first retired, made it official. Man, I I I didn't know what I was gonna do. You know what I'm saying? I was Same here. I I was lost and I was doing everything. Uh, I you know I dabbled in some things, but I I didn't find what what football brought to me that joy, you know, that feeling. And even to this day, I'm still trying to figure out what it is I'm trying to do. But I'm dabbling, you know, to private coaching, dabbling to mentoring high school, college kids, but also doing real estate, stuff like that, just doing off the field stuff. Realizing that I'm never going to ever going to have that feeling what football brought to me, but I can take the particular things that football taught me and transition it and trying to mold it in a way to where it's like playing football again. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, whatever you get into in life, there, you're going to have to have a team some way, some form or fashion. Yep. And to function and, and to maneuver in certain ways, football taught me that. Football taught me, like, when you're talking to a CEO boss and how intelligent they are and, and to really pick up on what they're doing, to read certain books and, and pick up the tendencies they have and make that transition into my life. Now, is it easy? I'm not going to say it here and sugarcoat and say, like, I got to figure it out because I don't have it figured out. I'm still it's doing a lot of experimenting for myself and trying to realize who I am as a person, not Aaron Williams, the football player that has been playing football since he was seven. So that transition is going to take some time. I'm not – it's never going to be easy. It's not going to be short. It's definitely going to take a lot of bumps and bruises through this journey you're going to go through. So – I'm continuing to, to 
I know one thing that I was told to is get my degree when I got done playing. So that is actually the, what I'm doing right now. Great. Um, Love actually, that. That, uh, that I promised my mom that I would do, but I also kept hearing it from former players and players that were in the league at the time. And they're like, get your degree, get your degree. And I never understood, like, I got money, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, why do I need a degree? But realizing, like, just maneuvering in the real world, because, like, let's be honest, like, the NFL world is not re the real world. Like, it's, it's, rea it's a different world. So transitioning to the real world, I understand, man, that degree is so important. Like, that's not to play with. So I always encourage people to, if you ever – have the opportunity to, to somehow, some way, strive to get that higher education, whatever that may be for you. Man, it's so crazy that you say that because two things. Number one, I remember when I stopped playing, I did not have anything figured out. Like I was completely lost. And I think for a lot of us, when you're done playing, it's almost kind of like a part of you is dying. So yeah, there's got to be a funeral. There's got to be some version of mourning. You got to go ahead and come up out from up under that low that you'll be in once this game is taken away from you. And because you no longer are blank, blank, the football player, you're just now blank, blank. Um, and, you know, for me, that was something that it took me, it took me a little while to come out from up under that. And I think that uh, when I started really actually doing some soul searching, and I think I was at the gym one day talking to one of my buddies. He's asking me a question about, you know, the top receivers in the league or something like that. Yeah, and yeah. They, meant, they mentioned to me, like, you know, man, you ever thought about, like, doing, like, radio or something? Like, you're still passionate about the game. You can speak it well. Like, why don't you try that? And I'm like, eh, man, I don't want to do all that. And right. then I started thinking on it. I'm like, you know what? Close to the game. I'm passionate about the game. And – even from that point on, whether it was on the radio, whether it was on TV, there's a part of me that would still get those butterflies, get that adrenaline that you get like right before a kickoff. Like yeah. right when they're giving like, you know, the starting lineups, the smoke's going up in the air, you know, the jets flying over, things like that. So, uh, so now I definitely understand what you mean, man, that uh, it takes time. It takes time because we give our life to this game so early at young of an age. And then it's taken away from us at relatively a young age compared to the life, the full life expectancy of humans. It's right. something that, uh, that, you know, definitely takes time to figure out what's your next passion. And, you know, as far as what you said about the degree, one of your buddies was actually a catalyst to make me go and get mine. It was, uh, it was going into my seventh year. And I remember Nandi Asamoa, Michael Huff, and it was one of the other guys. They all had their degrees. And here I am. I live in the same city that I went to school in, which is something that a lot of guys, they don't necessarily live in the, uh, the city that they went to school, especially if they go to school in a college town. Mm -hmm. And then I just kept wondering, I was like, man, why haven't I gotten my degree? Like, what's stopping me in the offseason? So I call up my counselor. I tell her, just put me in some classes, like right away before I could talk myself out of it. And before yeah. I knew it, um, I was already, you know, just a few credits shy. So I went ahead that final summer, knocked them out. And then I graduated literally in training camp. When I got my certificate, we were in training camp right after the lockout ended in 2011. Um, so man, that was a big moment for me, but really ultimately, man, and I really shouldn't even say this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put it out there. So many people look at athletes as being dumb. Uh, they, you know, there's no way that guy went back to go get his degree. You know, he's a meathead athlete. And when you look them dead in their eye and say, oh yeah, I graduated. I majored in such and such, minored in such and such. When you can do that, the look in their eyes, the stunned look in their face, man, I'm telling you, it's priceless, man. So yeah, just, man. Uh, yeah. so always remember that just because People love to put you in a box. They love to pigeonhole you as, okay, you're an athlete, so I feel like I already have you figured out. When you show them that piece of paper and when you tell them that you graduated, they now have to look at you in a completely different light other than, okay, pro player, made a lot of money, but, you know, like, he didn't graduate college or anything. So, you know, he's just one of those, you know, young, dumb guys. 
Yeah, man. It's, I mean, I'll put it like this. Life is like football. The more you can do, the more you're worth. Like, yes. you know what I mean? If you're just stuck just doing one thing and that one thing doesn't work out, it's just like, what are you going to do then? You know what I mean? And taking it back to, to your transition, I don't think people really understand the heartache and, and just what goes on when you transition out of, I'm not even going to just say football. I'm going to just say something you've been doing for a majority of your life. And then that having that not be, I wouldn't say taken away from you. It was taken away from me. I'm not sure if it was for you, but for me, it was taken away to then leave me out in the real world out to be like, all right, well, I was a, a safety for the Buffalo Bills and that's not, I don't, that's not my job no more. Now I'm like, okay, I'm still Aaron Williams. I still got this, but like, yo, like my, my identity is gone. That was probably one of the scariest things was, I think my, the fact that it was the first time that I didn't know who I was. Mm. And that's, a, that was a scary, scary feeling to me. And it, it, it drove me crazy. And for that, and then, you know, being around a lot of former athletes, a lot of them, what made me go back was like, I didn't want to be the only person to be like, hey, I didn't graduate. Like it just, to me, it didn't sound like who wants to be in the room and be feel like they're the dumbest one in the room. Of course. So that's what, that's what made me feel like, that's what made me strive to go back and be like, you know what? I, if I can reach the NFL, I can, I can for sure graduate college. You know what I mean? So <laughs> those two things I had to put in perspective, but, but yeah, man, it's just really cool to hear like athletes getting, getting their degrees because, that real world ain't nothing to play with. Man, hey, Doug, one thing that I am so proud of you on, because I, like I said, I watch you from a distance. I can see uh, whether it's social media, whenever I'm out hanging out with you, I see that you still live well. I notice, hey, hey like you always stay with a foreign in more ways than one. <clears throat> Talk to me about the plan of, so many athletes, when they're done playing, you know, within their first two to three years, they go broke. Yeah. What's your plan been like? Because by all accounts, you still live good. You look good. Uh, you appear to, like I said, still be thriving in life. Maybe not know exactly what your next path is going to be, but you're not going through some of the issues that I see some of our, some of our counterparts, some of our former uh, fraternity members going through when it comes to hard times, the financial problems? Man, honestly, I'm going to tell you, well, first of all, I'm going to tell you that my plan, my plan was not to keep up with the Joneses no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, I stay in my lane. And I'm not saying, like, I, I'm, I don't go out and get designer stuff here or buy cars there. I look at my budget and say, okay, what can I, what can I spend on myself? Mm -hmm. And first and foremost, man, I never really was a big spender from the get-go. I'm cheap, man. Like, I'm frugal with my money. <laughs> And one of the biggest fears when I got to the league was at some point I wasn't going to play this game. And I always heard like players go broke after two and a half to three years. And I was like, man, I definitely don't want to be statistic in that. So when I officially retired, man, I lived, I lived comfortably, but I lived like, I mean, I'm a single guy. I don't need a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I got my family taken care of here and there, but you, overall, like, you know, I don't splurge. I don't, I don't really do the whole Nobu every week type thing, you know, <laughs> what I'm saying? or ma maestros or maestros <laughs> every week. Like it's good every indulge every now and then, but I know, man, you, you know, players, I know even yeah. players that still live that NFL lifestyle. Uh -huh. And that lifestyle is great, but if that check ain't looking the same as what it used to be, yeah, man, it's gonna be long before you're really gonna hide what you what's really going on in your life. And I never wanted to be the one to hide because of my spendings and, and me being selfish and still trying to keep up with you know players that are getting. I'm talking about <laughs> them good checks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? them real good checks. So that was, that was my plan. My plan is just, just be me, man. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it got me there. So 
continue to be me. There's no reason to change for anybody. Um, and, and just to be smart with my investments as well. Like, don't get me wrong. I made, I, I definitely made some, I wouldn't say bad investments. Like it didn't hurt me, but it, it didn't help me in the future as well. So no, going through those type of bumps and bruises, I realized that if I'm going to invest something, I had to do the research myself to understand what I'm getting myself into. And I, I'm not saying you need to know every single bits and pieces of what you're about to get into, but at least have an understanding and go into a room and not feel dumb and be like, here's my money. Now triple it. You know what I'm saying? And then be like, all right, I'm a triple it. And then you realize like you're waiting on that, your funds to come back mm -hmm. and it never comes. And you're, you're wondering why and he's giving you reasons and you're like, okay, okay. But really he's just feeding you BS, you know what I'm saying? Just to keep you with your money. So um, I learned from not only my mistakes, but uh, also other players um, that I've had conversations with. And, uh, and I've honestly, bro, I've, I have really good uh, parents. I have a really good team that make sure like they know I'm not going to go crazy, but if I do, they know how to like bring me back in, in a way. Yeah. I think that uh, for so much of us, like I said, you've been blessed, obviously, uh, with a good family. Like you just said, me coming from a two-parent household, uh, yeah. my family was such a big part in actually helping me not make dumb decisions, things like that. And that, to me, is what's so sad, especially within our community and especially with players that come from a minority background, is that we don't always come from that strong family background. We don't always come from having those people around us that are going to force us to make good decisions rather than bad decisions, things like that. So I think that having that great structure from the very beginning, I think it's invaluable when it comes to seeing somebody have continued success, not just the lightning in a bottle, but having that longevity of success when it comes to not making the bad decisions, the bad investments. Like what you just said, I think, man, family is paramount whenever it comes to doing those types of things. Kind of like, you know, the cliche goes, it takes a village. It does. It takes yeah. a huge village, man. It takes a, it, it, it really does take a village. Cause I, I don't think you can point, I mean, there may be a few people, but for a person to say, I did this on my own, like literally with no help. I mean, I, I haven't seen it. Someone's yeah. had to have help. Mm -hmm. in some type of way and now i'm not saying they, they you know walk them through the whole process but you know they had a some type of influence in and where they're at today so definitely. i actually want to ask you something you asked me about my last game what was your like like what tell tell me about your last like when you're did you know when your last game last play was you i had a I had a good idea. I think uh, once I left Oakland, then obviously after I left Kansas City, I think mentally I was at a point where I was mentally slowly moving away from the game. Yeah. And then, so uh, 2012 was my last season. 2013, obviously I didn't play anymore. And I think for me, that was when I started mentally thinking, okay, you know what? Maybe I should go into something else. I don't know what, but I feel like I'm not where I need to be at mentally to go ahead and do this anymore. Yeah. I think uh, when I really look back on it, me leaving Oakland probably took a lot more out of me than I realized at the time. Um, but like I said, I didn't realize that till like 2013, 2014, 2015, you know, but, uh, but I, I had a good inkling that uh, 2012 was probably going to be my last year. I did. Uh, and like I said, it took, a, it took a long time for me to go ahead and, I knew it in the back of my mind, but just go ahead and take the take the acceptance of it at the forefront of my mind and go ahead and actually be able to, with a full heart, full conscience, clean conscience, be able to go ahead and uh, and walk away. That's dope. Uh, that's good. I mean, because, you know, sometimes some players don't, they don't have that, that feeling. Sometimes it's just like this. Yeah. Other players, mm -hmm. other players, you know, they, they have the opportunity to, walk away from the game so i just always wonder how which it's because some players knew exactly when their last game or had that feeling and then some players just like man i was just i got that call and that was it you know what i'm yeah. saying so yeah they yeah. always they always say man that 
you'll leave this game either two years too early or two years too late. Mm-hmm. Some guys, yeah. they can hang on for an extra year or two when they really have already lost their legs, they've lost their, their feet, their speed, mm-hmm. all of that, lost their arm strength as their quarterback. And then you got other guys that they'll leave while they still have something left in the tank. Maybe the team drafted a young corner or safety or whatever in the first round. So that kind of bumped in down the depth chart. Then yeah. you already know the team, uh, the lead, the teams want to go younger, things like that. So mm. it can happen in a myriad of ways. But usually, from what I've kind of seen, guys either leave this league two years too early or two years too late. Rarely mm. is it ever right when they need right. to, yeah. like, you know, right okay. at that perfect time. Mm. <clears throat> Man, next up, <clears throat> I want to ask you, because we all have dealt with this in some version, some form of you're in high school, you got your best friends. You're in college, you got your homeboys, you're cool with something like that. Then you finally make it pro, you make it to the league. Yeah. And you got your circle of friends, you got your day, your day ones. Talk to me about how you make the decision, how you decipher who you're gonna take with you and who you pretty much have to go ahead and kind of leave by the wayside, not because you hate them, not because they're bad people, but you just got to go ahead and somewhat distance yourself from them. Man, honestly, my story is actually backwards. Like I was welcoming people in and I had to figure out who was my friend for me. Uh, I just realized who was taken from me and then who was actually looking out for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, like I have a small circle, like, when if you consider like my best friends, four people. And, and then you have the people that I occasionally talk to, like we're good people, like we're good friends, but we're not just really close. Yeah. I have those people. So I, I, you know, the, my close best friends, man, I don't even know, like friends to me are like, kind of like associates in a way, but like my best friends, are like my family. Mm-hmm. So it's real, it's real easy to, to like decipher who's and who because you know the ones the ones I've been through with you like I'm talking about like dude like thick and thin like not just the highs because anybody can stay with anybody during the highs so I'm talking about when when you going through it and I'm <laughs> sure you because like I don't think people understand that NFL players man they they really do deal with a lot and it's not yeah. just it's not just the game of football. Mm-hmm. Game of football itself brings a lot of emotion, but when you're trying to perform at a high level and you have outside distractions, it it it's like a teetering, like it it's not balanced. Yeah, someone's gonna crash in some way, or in form, or fashion. So I had friends who were with me when I was crashing, and they were there trying to lift me up. So those the ones that that were there for that, those are the ones I know for sure. Now the other ones you gotta decide, you know, uh, they're not they're not like my tight knit group. Mm-hmm. Like they got my back, but you know, you never they're more of like the icky ones. Like you just never know if they're gonna have your back. <laughs> if it came to a fight, you know what I'm saying? Are they gonna uh-huh. they rock with you or are they gonna run off and look after for themselves? Those are the ones you gotta kind of judge on just feeling and just being around people or experiences, and you kind of just weed out from there. It's pick and choose. I mean. Life is going to show you who's rocking with you and who's not. No doubt about it. Uh, like I said, I've had my experiences before, realizing who's really a friend, realizing who was just there for the ride. So, yeah, it's definitely something that once things get murky, once things go south, something something comes up, you're going through a tough time, that's when you really see who's going to ride for you and who you want and who won't. My old man always told me, he said, he said son, if you can find about two or three people throughout your entire life that you know through thick and thin, no matter what, can have your back. He always told me, say, you're way ahead of the game. If you can find two or three people in your lifetime that you can, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, okay, I know he got me. No matter what, no questions asked. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of snakes out there, man. I'll say that. <laughs> hey, man. Make sure you keep your grass cut low. You better keep it cut low because they, they stay really low <laughs> for you to get a chance to, for sure. All right. Okay. Last question. 
Talk to me about Ball Hawk Academy. So Ball Hawk Academy is – It's to elevate your game, but not only elevate your game, it's to elevate you as a person. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I was fortunate enough, like you said, you and I had two-parent household to, to guide us. Um, there are players out there that don't have that. So ball hawk is not only about being a ball hawk on the field, but it's also about flying and soaring in life, going to reach the highest you can as a person, as a man. And, you know, we go through, we go through coverages, we go through game film and I critique you and pretty much just analyze you and, and how we can perform your game um, on the field, but also what is it, what, what do you, what is it you do off the field, mm -hmm. you know, community service. I don't think people understand how big that is for, for athletes. That's huge. As athletes, we as athletes, we're going to be in the community. We're, whether you like it or not, it's just, you're going to find a way to get back. So we work on your technique and then I put you on the mental, you know, put you on the board and we go through coverages. You're basically one, two, three, four. Um, and we go through that. And then I figure out just you as a person and a personality. And I, and I, I, I mentor you of, as if I was your NFL coach or, co or college recruiter, because that's who the people you're going to be dealing with mm -hmm. for the next however many years you're going to be dealing with. So technique on the, on the, on the board, whiteboard, going through mental stuff, uh, film work, and then how to study the game. I think that's a big thing um, for young athletes. I think, well, as for me, I'll speak for myself. When I was coming up, I'm not going to lie to you. My first few years was why I almost got kicked out. Man, I barely watched film. I ain't going to lie to you. I, I, I concentrated so much on my God-given ability um, and my athletic ability that I already knew that I was above the, the average. But when I got to the league and I realized that every guy is just like me or even better, you had to find a way to, to stand in that, in that realm. So we go through a lot. It's a, it's a life thing. So um, we talk about recruiting. We talk about life. Um, and it, I just go through this journey with you to get you to where you want to be. And with me, I'm a realist. Not everybody's going to go to UT. Not everybody's going to go to LSU. Some guys go to St Stephen F. Austin. Some guys go to UTSA. But go those guys... University of Houston. University of Houston. <laughs> that isn't, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. Some guys, you, what is the end goal? And the end goal is the NFL. And NFL don't say D1. It says NFL. And that's the best in the country, no matter where you're at. So... I, some kids, you know, it's hard to it's hard for them to understand that man. I I may have to go this JUCO route for a year, ball there, then go to maybe D two or even D one, ball there, and then prove myself. It's just, everybody has a different journey, and I've been, I've experienced each and every one's journey. Now I may not have been like a JUCO guy, but I I had a friend who went through JUCO, and I went through that same journey he went through of the struggles, so I can teach you what to do in that situation. So I'm just there to mentor them to get them to D1 to finish through college. And then after that, whether that be NFL, okay, cool. We'll talk about NFL. If it's not NFL, okay, what can I do to help you transition out of football? Cause I just really being a person that's transitioned out of football, man, it's hard. Yeah. So I want to be there to make it easier for, for an athlete because not having that support, man, it will crash and it'll burn you. And I've seen, man, even dealing with cats with CTE, dealing with life itself, it's just, man, it's just hard. So make it any way possible for me to make that experience a little bit easier for them is, is what Ball, Ball Academy is all about. Nice. Speaking of guys who did not go to a national power or like you just said, the UTs, the LSUs, but also obviously made it to the league and made a big step from their second year to their third year, Josh Allen. I already know that you're still yeah. heavily a part of that Bills Mafia. We yeah. saw what your boy Dak just got yesterday from the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. What do you think Josh Allen's going to get based on the performances that he's had, mainly this past season, knowing he's only going to get better as the years go by? 
Man, I, honestly, man, with the fluctuation in these salaries, man, I wonder how these billionaires are going to start paying these kids <laughs> now. Because, I'm the same way. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? If you look at the numbers, the numbers have been better than Dak Prescott. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he's only in his year. It'll be year four this coming yeah. up year. He's up for an extension like like right now. Yeah, like right now, if he really could. I mean, <laughs> if he really wanted to. Um I mean, if you're if you're asking me now, if, if I'm Josh Allen and and I've been producing, like I I brought a team that hasn't been to the playoffs since 1995. I brought you guys that in my second year. Yeah. Not only did I bring that, y'all wanted me, y'all wanted more. So then I gave you more, and I brought you AFC. Got you to the AFC championship game. Yep. So if I'm Josh Allen, I'm playing on my high, I'm playing with my, you know, ace king cards right now. If I'm poker, you know, I'm trying to cash out. <laughs> um, seeing seeing Dak Prescott get that, it was was huge for him. Uh-huh. If I'm in this position, I'm like, okay, I'm calling my agent saying, hey, what's what's the plan? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I always tell players, man, get what you can get out of this league. Because one, it is once it's gone, it is gone. So milk it, milk as much as you can get. So honestly, he's gonna break the bank. Um, but then again, you I mean. Yeah, man, he's, he's going to break the bank. As long as he keeps continuing, if he plays like he did this past year, the next year, he's going to give him big, big bucks, big, big bucks. So, um, but we'll just have to see. I, you know, like you said, he's been improving, so I don't see any decrease in his game anytime soon. And, and you know, that team itself is, is going, if not to Super Bowl next year, real, real soon. Because they have jumped from nothing to, okay, y'all might have a little buzz to now, like, okay, Buffalo's back on that that 90s run type deal. So it's it's going to be exciting to see. All right. Got a last, uh, got a few rapid fire, all facts, no cap questions. Just go ahead, right. tell me the first thing popping to your mind. <clears throat> I know you can go ahead and try to abbreviate this one, this first one. First groupie moment. First groupie moment? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, honestly, with the era of social media, man, all my groupiness came through DMs, honestly. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, before social media was, like, crazy, I did have, like, girls come up to me and be like, tell me how handsome and, and beautiful I am. But when I got to that league, bro, it was – like, college was something. Like, I was like, okay, like, are you – Cause me feel some type of way. You feel me? But bro, when I got to the league, man, I, like I said, it's a fantasy world and I was a joke. I was enjoying it. So probably just the, the crazy DMs that I would get. And I would get some mm. crazy DMs. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh no. You know what? Now she mentioned it. Okay. Crazy groupie moment. I had a stalker 2014, right? Okay. okay. Uh, she followed me all the way to our joint practice with Pittsburgh Steelers. So she like drove herself. And like wore my jersey, had a sign and everything. Tell me how much she like was uh, my number one fan, and like found me at the hotel. Types like knew we were staying at the hotel, and was trying to like find my room, like like passing security type stuff. Like it was crazy. <laughs> it was, I it was bad, man. It was bad. That's the whole, like that's the yeah number one groupie thing. Okay. I All right. <clears throat> Dark or light liquor? Say it again. Dark or light alcohol? Oh, light for sure. Vacation, beach or mountains? Oh, we yeah, actually had this conversation. Man, okay, for a vacation. Yeah. Oh, okay. For me, I'm gonna say beach. Um, uh, for this mm-hmm. one, just because I know people like want to get in the water, and I love yeah. to see the ocean and the waves. But I love snowboarding too, so it's either the most likely the mountain for me personally. But if it's like a family thing, the beach. Big hit or INT to the house? INT to the house, easily. That's not even. (laughs) Ain't got to think about that. That's every DB's dream, man. (laughs) Okay, no, of course I'm just saying, man. Hey, I'm a corner. Yeah, you you know what I'm thinking (laughs) for sure. Um, Okay, last one. Lambo or Ferrari? Hey, I just had a conversation too. 
All right, so I have a brother who has a Lambo, and I had the opportunity to drive that around for a minute, and that was really cool. But something about those Ferraris, <laughs> they drive way better than the Lamborghini. So They do. They do. So this is how I put it. Lam- I'm going to say Ferrari personally, but this is how I put it. Lamborghini for looks, Ferrari for performance. That's just how I look at it. Like, mm. you look at a Lamborghini, you're like, okay, <laughs> yo, that's Batman right there. You look at a Ferrari, you're like the same thing, but you're not as wowed as you true. are. With it. Very true. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, my man. AJ, appreciate you coming on, man. Love oh, man, you. thank you for having me. This is fun. This is dope. <laughs> man, always, you know, much love. ATX, for those of you who don't know that, Austin, Texas, if you don't know, check it out. My yes. man, much love. Love everything you're doing, man. And you know, anything you need, go ahead and hit me up. You know how to get at me. Hey, man, we need to connect again. So whenever, whenever you're free and you get all your podcast stuff, man, we need to connect again. All good, bro. You be good. Be safe. Be easy. I mean, I appreciate it. Yes, sir.